Ah, the copyright claim song. <laughs> Whenever this song plays, I get a copyright claim on my video. It's not really anything terrible, nothing further happens. Just kind of become a running joke for me. Running gag. Shannon entered the entrance hall to the mansion with a tottering gait. A mixture of exultation and uncertainty gave her a feeling that she couldn't easily describe. It swelled up in her chest until it felt like she was about to burst. After stopping for a second in front of the servant room to take a deep breath and calm her heart, she opened the door. But why? So she really did go back to the mansion? Because I think she was ordered to stay at the guest house anyway. If Goda sees her, it's probably gonna um, give her trouble. Or Klaus. Oh no, shit, there he already is. Inside, Gorda, who had been ordered to take the midnight shift at the mansion tonight, was absorbed in a worn-out crossword puzzle magazine. He looked up for an instant to see if one of the family had come, but when he realized it was a fellow servant, he returned to his puzzle as if nothing had happened. Oh. Um, Kenji-sama told me to come and help you. Oh, is that so? That's a relief. I was just about to go check that the mansion was fully locked up, but I felt uneasy about leaving this room unmanned. After all, Klaus summer and the others' meeting looks as though it will continue for quite some time. They might request some tea at any moment. That's true. Then what shall we do? Should I watch over... In that case, forgive me, Shannon's aunt, but I'll ask that you patrol the mansion. I will stay here, awaiting the family's orders. Ah, oh, you're just a lazy fuck. That's what you are. Yes. Shannon was slightly disgusted. Even though she'd come here to help out as a favor, she was casually being forced to do the job of the person actually on duty. Furthermore, after one-sidedly forcing that task on her, Goda returned to his magazine once again and became immersed in his crossword puzzle. Fuck this guy. Fucking ass clown. Shannon bowed her head as a token sign of respect for her elder, then left the room to patrol the mansion. Thanks to her being a bit ticked off, she managed to suppress that floaty feeling she'd been having until just now. And anyway, she couldn't let Genji or Kanon see her looking like this. She wanted a little time to herself until her heart calmed down, so maybe going on patrol wouldn't be so bad. Or would it? She began to hear the tumultuous voices of the family discussion coming from the dining hall. Someone was speaking at great length, only to be interrupted by someone else. This second person also began to speak in a very long, drawn-out fashion until yet another person interrupted. That kept on repeating. It was as though their displeasure was seeping out through their voices. She had been told to go to the guest house, so it would be bad if Klaus discovered her. I was about to say, don't let that guy dis discover you. Thinking this, Shannon dashed past the dining hall. Then she went along a prearranged route through the dark mansion, checking that all the locks were secure. She walked down the hall, checking each window. Man, that has that, that's got to be scary. There were no humans on Dokkenjima other than those connected to the family, so locking up didn't really serve much of a purpose. You never know. There could always be somebody. I mean, come on. You have a, a huge mansion there, and somebody living there who is known to be super rich. So I'm sure it could cross some people's minds to sneak on the island with a boat and rob the place. So I don't think it's that far out to... Um, to regularly lock everything. No one had been in the habit of locking up at the Oshiromiya head family, at least not until Natsuhi had scolded them for being careless. The metal fixtures on the windows were ice cold, and as she checked them one by one, the glow in her heart seemed to cool down. Hmm? The hell? Uh-oh. At that time, she thought she saw something twinkling across the hall. Twinkling? How could anything be twinkling through the darkness of the hall? She figured she must have been imagining it, but she still held her breath. Let's turn off the lights. Grasping a curtain, she fearfully gazed down the hall. However, other than the occasional crack of thunder brightening the hallway, she was unable to glimpse any flicker again. It must have been her imagination after all. Maybe her heart was so agitated that she'd seen something that didn't even exist. Shannon went back to checking the windows. However, a certain unnerving memory was resurrected in the back of her mind. It was that ghost story which had been passed down amongst the servants who served the Oshiromiya head family. The mansion had two different masters. One of the day, and one of the night. Beatrice, the master of the night, 
would sometimes fly around the mansion in the form of sparkling butterflies. That was the story. Come to think of it, didn't Kanon Kun once say he'd seen it with his own eyes? Though he got sulky when I said he must have imagined it and refused to believe him, could it possibly be true? The war of the thunder gave no answer. Oh, come on. Now we're back to that. It was just getting so exciting. Or is that Shannon going back? They're having a great time, I see. Achievement unlocked. Midnight. Oh. What, the night is already over? No. The second day, October 5, 1986. Genji tightened his bowed tie and looked outside through a crack in the curtains. Maybe the rain had died down a tiny bit since the previous night, but the thick rain clouds didn't seem like they'd be letting any trace of the morning sun get by. The morning was dim and far from refreshing. It seems it will last all day after all. Sorry for keeping you waiting, Genji Sama. Kanon finished uh, checking his appearance and exited the washroom. On their normal schedule, it was rare for anyone to have to suffer going straight from a midnight shift to an early morning shift. They were on a special schedule for the two days of the family conference. However, unless the typhoon passed today, the relatives' stay on this island would last until tomorrow. Kanon thought it best to be prepared for the special schedule to last an extra day. The two of them left the guest house, opening their umbrellas. The rose garden had been devastated by the wind and rain on the previous night. Even though they'd spent several days making it beautiful to welcome the guests, one stormy night was enough to ruin it. Khan on side. The two headed for the mansion. They were supposed to meet up with Goda and prepare breakfast. Please, can Goda be dead? Goda was such a perfectionist that he had probably already woken up and was probably already preparing a breakfast as exquisite and elegant as glasswork. They reached the overhang by the entrance to the mansion and folded up their umbrellas. Genji took a bundle of several keys from his pocket and unlocked the front door. <laughs> the Ushidomiya family mansion was the only thing on Orok Genjima, so in the past they hadn't been in the habit of locking up. However, Natsuhi had ordered that the mansion be locked up from midnight to early morning. Ever since then, unlocking the door in the early morning had become part of the servant's morning shift. This task had been given to Genji and Kanon so that Goda could start preparing breakfast as soon as he woke up. 
because <laughs> he was a dick to uh, to the others, and he seems to like to show off so much that he um <coughs> yeah he seems to try and show off all the time to get a better um, position or like to 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 be favored by the master and if something goes wrong he pushes it uh, on the others like he w I think on one of the fr on the first day he was trying to make the tea extra good and then he, he screwed it up so when it was all screwed up he just let Shannon bring it out instead so she should would take all the blame or something like that <coughs> and just the other just last night man he Shannon comes there and and like offers her help and he just keeps doing his fucking puzzle and makes her do all his work. He's a dick. Silence had fallen in the mansion, giving the impression that the mansion itself was still asleep. But I hear his food is great, so there's that. Well then, let us begin the morning course. Yes, sir. The two of them split up and began opening the curtains throughout the mansion. If the curtains stayed closed, the mansion would remain enveloped in faint darkness as though it was still trapped on the previous night. That's a nice way of saying that. Following a well-rehearsed procedure, Kanon went around the mansion, opening the curtains for one window after another without having to retrace his steps once. Even with, his, even with this horrible weather, drawing the curtains made it feel just a little bit like morning. While doing that, he passed in front of the kitchen. Even though he hadn't smelled anything yet, his stomach started aching for some of Gorda's prized cooking. Good morning. Huh? Uh-oh. He tried to greet Gorda, who should have been getting breakfast ready, but Gorda was nowhere to be seen. Uh-oh. That's not good. The kitchen was darkly lit, and not only were the curtains not open, but the fan wasn't even running. It was still cold, without any trace of a fire being lit, so of course there were no signs of breakfast being made either. Though it would have been inexcusable, perhaps Gorda had overslept. Even servants are only human. They sometimes sleep in and show up late. In the rare case that such a thing happens, it's part of a servant's code to hide the unsightly scene before anyone notices, smoothly cover it up, and make sure the family never even realizes that anything has gone wrong. Conon took the receiver of the phone that had been fitted to the wall and dialed the number for the extension line in the servant's sleeping room. Uh-oh. He couldn't hear that characteristic sound of a dial tone. Oh no. Cannon tried picking up the receiver again, but even so, he couldn't hear the usual dial tone. He tried dialing again, but it had no apparent effect. Could the lightning last night have damaged some machine, breaking the extension line? The equipment in this mansion was all worn out. Kanon fully understood that even the smallest thing could have caused it to break down. He gave up trying to wake Goda with the phone and dashed over to the servant's sleeping room. How long has it been since I stopped sleeping and started lazily staring up at the ceiling? That vague sense of awakening was part of Natsuhi's usual morning experience. Okay, so she's still alive. She always slept lightly and she couldn't sleep at all without medicine. To Natsuhi, sleep was definitely not a happy thing. I can imagine if it's like that. Good lord. When she looked outside, she saw that it was still pouring. <laughs> of course, I've been stabbed so many times. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's not going Dangan Rompa yet. If she hadn't sensed a tiny amount of light, she might have mistakenly thought that it was still the previous night. She herself was one of the host, hosts, hosts, uh, so she mustn't wake up later than her guests. Urging herself on, she raised up her body, which still hadn't completely recovered from yesterday's weariness. No one would torment her as long as she remained inside this room, and her headache wouldn't get any worse here. This room was the only place she could find peace. Goda's <laughs> 75% fan. <coughs> so when she left, it meant returning to the world where her husband's siblings kept trying to stab each other in the back. In that case, wouldn't it be better to just stay locked up in this room forever? Yeah, I can totally see where that mindset would come from. I mean, yeah, good lord. I wouldn't want to leave the room either if I was her. That ridiculous notion brought a bitter smile to Natsuhi's face. She was starting to sound like Kinzo. <laughs> True, though she often complained about Kinzo staying locked up in his room and refusing to attend to everyone else, the truth was that she longed to do the same. Not so he gave her head a small shake, and her fantasy was replaced by the reawakening of her usual headache.
When she reached for the doorknob, trying to leave the room, her hand touched the scorpion charm that she had hung from it before going to sleep the previous night. It was Maria's charm which Natsuhi had received from Jessica. Didn't Jessica say something about it having the power to repel magic, telling her to hang it from her doorknob? Maybe it was thanks to the charm that at least this room had been protected from the malice of her husband's siblings. As she thought this, her mood began to get a little more cheerful. I wonder if I have Jessica to thank for the little bit of peaceful sleep I managed to receive. Then Natsuhi remembered. That's right, last night I promised Jessica that I'd give her a charm of my own in exchange for this one, didn't I? Natsuhi opened a drawer on her dresser and took out an antique accessory case that she had treasured when she was a child. Inside there were many small objects that Natsuhi had thought were valuable at the time. From amidst those, she pulled out a red pouch. Inside was a small round mirror about 10 centimeters across. It looked quite old, but the design on the back of the mirror was very ornate and it felt like something with, uh, with historical value. At the very least, it seemed much more authentic than the other charm, which looked like a plastic scorpion keychain. She had heard that this was a spiritual mirror for warding off evil spirits and she had been given it specially by her grandmother when her grandfather's mementos had been distributed. It had been believed since long ago that a strange power resided in this mirror. Perhaps people thought it could reflect calamity and malice in the same way it reflected light. Wasn't there a mirror in uh, Project Zero as well that would like do something? No, I think it was some kind of stone that would... There was some item that would revive you when you die once, but I think it was a some kind of stone, not a mirror. It's been too long that I played it. That's why he returned the mirror to its pouch. It would probably be a fitting object to hand over to Jessica. Uh oh. Oh, it did. Nice. Just as she was placing it in her pocket, the sound of someone knocking on the door suddenly echoed throughout the room. Yes? Ah, oh, okay. Good morning, madam. It is Genji. My apologies for waking you so early. Sorry. I'm coming now. What is it? No servant had ever come to her this early in the morning, nor had they come to wake her in person. Rose, yeah, that was scary, that game. Perhaps something bad had happened. Maybe some fatal oversight had been made while preparing breakfast, something that would shame the household in front of their guests. Not so he took a deep breath in anticipation for whatever trouble she was about to hear of. When she opened the door, Genji once again gave a morning greeting while bowing deeply. Not so he tentatively responded. Good morning. Did something happen? My apologies. It would seem that the telephones have broken down due to the lightning last night. The extension telephone isn't working, so please forgive my coming to see you directly. The extension telephone isn't working? That will be troublesome. Will it be possible to fix it? I am afraid we don't know the location of the damage. Later on, I would like to call in an expert and have him repair it. Does that mean we'll be unable to have it repaired until after the typhoon passes? Then it will remain broken down for the duration of our guest's stay. Will that hamper our efforts to care for our guests? We will do all we can to ensure there are no problems. Very well. I'm counting on you to make sure we have no blunders. Natsuhi let out a small sigh of relief. She had been prepared for the worst. But damage to the telephones wasn't the kind of trouble she was worried about. Then again, even this would probably be enough to spark sarcasm from Eva. Natsuhi gave her head a light shake. Are the preparations for breakfast proceeding well? As to that, we haven't been able to find Goda. The arrangements for breakfast have yet to be carried out. I, I really don't know which voice to give Genji. I, I think I keep switching back and forth between different voices, but oh well. What did you say? Not so he was indignant. To her, this was a much bigger problem than the phone's not working. And despite that, this piece of information was the part that had been postponed. Why did everything go well most of the time and then come to something like this when the relatives were visiting? That's why he put her hand to her forehead and shook her head. Well, I suppose he slept in. At any rate, just see to it that someone hurries up and prepares breakfast. I don't care who. What? Now what? Natsui exited into the hall and turned around for a second to close the door to her room. The creepy thing she saw there silenced her completely. It was an unpleasant sight, as though someone had dipped their fingers in a reddish-black liquid and scratched at the door around the doorknob. It was probably some sort of awful prank. 
arranged by some person who wanted to make it look as though they tried to force the door with bloody hands. Oh, shit. What sort of prank is this? How awful. I also just noticed it as I came to call you. I will clean it later. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. But perhaps this is a vulgar joke by one of the guests. Disgusting, truly disgusting. Who in the world would pull such a childish and disgusting prank? Not so he had a pretty good idea, but of course there was no proof. So even if she pushed the issue, it would just seem as though she was making a fuss about nothing. In fact, it would surely be better to act as though she hadn't even realized that such a prank had been played on her. Not so he gave the order to have it cleaned and headed off to the parlor with a squeak of her heels. Okay, so they're still alive. When Natsuhi and Genji arrived in the parlor, Eva and Hideyoshi were already there. Good morning, everyone. Morning, Natsuhi-san. I heard Gorda-san will be making his breakfast, too. My stomach's been getting all excited since I woke up. Where are her? After all, it seems food is all you can look forward to at the Head Family household. Oh, man. I'm pleased to see that you two are in high spirits so early in the morning, Eva-san. With a wary expression, Natsuhi returned Eva's gaze, which was fiercely compa competitive despite the early hour. Then Kanon jogged in. After bowing an apology to the relatives for running inside the mansion, he noticed Genji and told him something in a small voice. Kanon, have you still not found Goda? My apologies, madam. I went all over the inside of the mansion and the guest house, but I still haven't found him. Where in the world has he gone? At any rate, breakfast is a higher priority than finding Goda right now. See to it immediately. Yes. Kanon glanced at Genji. It seemed he had something else to report, but was, but was uncertain whether or not the words should come from him. Genji nodded and decided to give the report himself. Madam, it is not only Goda. This Kinzo Orphic? Oh. Your husband is also nowhere to be found. My husband? Yes. Even before visiting you, I went to his room to tell him that breakfast wasn't being prepared, but I did not find him there. Furthermore, he is not the only one missing. Rudolf-sama, his wife, and Rosa-sama are nowhere to be found. Not in the guest house, nor the mansion. Yes, they were not in their rooms in the guest house either. When she'd heard that Goda alone was missing, she'd assumed he had slept in or was loafing around somewhere. However, now that she'd learned that several of the relatives were also nowhere to be seen, she began to take a slightly more optimistic view. Could last night's family conference have continued all night up until the present moment? <laughs> Friendship intensifies. If so, they might have wanted to cool their heads after being shot in a stuffy room, going out for walks on their own through the rain. Yeah, I'm not sure. The part about cooling their heads really sounded like something Klaus would say. Goda had probably been summoned to accompany them and aid them in some way. Goda was not a man who lost track of time. He had to understand that preparations for breakfast would be hindered if he did not return. However, maybe the family conference had continued until this very moment, with an atmosphere that wouldn't make it hard for anyone to slip out. Yes, that theory would be quite convincing for Natsuhi. She remembered the illusion she'd felt that morning as though the previous night had never ended. When she learned that the feeling wasn't just an illusion, she once again took a deep, wary breath. After all, that banquet of filthy vultures circling Kinzo's property was still going on. Perhaps they are still discussing the inheritance somewhere in the garden or maybe the beach. At any rate, if we don't call Goda back, we'll never be able to begin preparations for breakfast. So what are you saying? Are Nissan and the rest still continue the discussion? She had planned to say it in a small voice, but Hideyoshi overheard Natsuhi and managed to grasp the situation. Nissan and Rudolf sure are tough. Maybe it's just youth. In Rosa's case, just a bit after midnight, the two of us were so tired that we headed back to bed. Though I do remember that Nissan and the rest were still having a heated discussion at that point. Men certainly aren't pleasant when they get all fired up. Natsuhi snorted, her face still blank. Kanon, search outside. If you find Goda, tell him to return immediately and begin preparing uh, breakfast. Certainly. Natsuhi, Nisan, we don't know for sure that they're outside, do we? Couldn't they also be inside Father's study? I see, that's certainly possible. I don't know what path the conversation took. Well, there's certainly a chance they moved to Father's study and let him in on the discussion. 
I can't imagine that father would willingly let them bring such a detestable topic into his study. You really think so? Well, then there's nothing we can do. I'm sorry, Genji-san and Kalmankun, but could you search outside? It wouldn't be that strange for Nissan to suggest they go outside for a walk to cool their heads. Even in this weather, I'll go to father's study. Who knows, they might actually be there after all. Ifa-san, I couldn't ask a guest like you to exert herself, so I will go. I can also wish him a good morning while I'm at it. Oh, then I'll leave it in your hands. Though I somehow doubt he'll return your greeting. Natsui san have you always been on such good terms with father? I don't know whether you could call it that, but I am sure that I have gained his trust as the wife of the successor to the Yoshirumiya family. Boom! <coughs> then I'm sure he'll at least answer you, right? Uh, at least answer you, right? I'd like to at least have breakfast with father. Do you think you could convince him to come down and join us? It seems that he thoroughly despises the rest of us, but I'm sure he'll listen to you if he trusts you that much. After speaking so boldly, if you're unable to convince father and come down alone, then I doubt you'll ever be able to claim that you've earned his trust again. Oh man, what a... I am not confident, but I will try. Not so he responded, looking discouraged. However, knowing Kinzo's temperament, she had absolutely no confidence in her ability to bring him out. Yeah, probably fucking dead anyway. Eva was clearly mocking her, confident that Natsuhi wouldn't be able to get Kinzo to come down. But even so, Natsuhi would lose face if she gave up, saying it was impossible and letting Eva go instead. Eva's mean-spirited and unreasonable demand made Natsuhi clench her fists slightly. When Genji realized this, he softly spoke to her over her shoulder. Madam, please take this, if you would. And this is... Genji handed Natsuya a sparkling gold key of ornate design. Oh shit. It was the key to Kinzo's study. The study had an auto lock and couldn't be unlocked as long as Kinzo forbade entrance. However, since Genji was especially trusted by Kinzo, he was allowed to carry a key through that door. What, and he actually gives it to her now? I mean, just for this moment, of course, but still, that's pretty bold. But if this key is used, won't you also receive the blame? When the master is sleeping deeply, simply knocking on the door will not suffice. And it would be more difficult to persuade the master to leave his room if you must talk through the door. Please use this. Genji. Until now, Natsuhi had thought of Genji as a cold servant who wouldn't do anything for her since he worked directly under Kinzo. But it looked like she would have to alter her understanding of him. She wanted to communicate her gratitude, but by then Genji had already turned his back on her and was walking down the corridor with Kano. But as Natsuhi watched them go, the words directed at her from behind were sneering. Well, then you must bring father with you, okay? After all, it's his son's precious wife who's asking. I'm sure he'll listen to you. Hee hee hee. We're guests, so we'll just relax here at our leisure. Quit it, Efra, you're talking, taking this to far. Sorry, Natsuhi, but we're counting on you to deal with father. I like that Hideyoshi at least um, sometimes has enough of, of Ifa's um, yeah, mean-spirited sentences and protects Natsuhi just a little bit. With her answering, Natsuhi forcefully spun around on her heels and quickly left that place. Oh, now we're back to them. I wanted to see what is in Kinzel's study. After all that excitement the previous night, there was no way anyone was going to wake up early. George, Aniki, Jessica and I were snoring loudly on the beds in the cousin room, but Maria, who had gone straight to bed without joining in, was completely awake. Here, Christian, for dich. Oh, fuck. Falscher Knopf. <laughs> As she rubbed her sleepy eyes and looked around, she was met with the loud snoring of the other three cousins. For a while, Maria had to think about what had happened. After that, she realized that her mother wasn't with her and she quickly got lonely. <laughs> Maria left the cousin room, trying to head to the room that had been arranged for her and her mother. Paying no heed to the three who were sleeping soundly, she slammed the door shut. In response, Butler mumbled and rolled over in his sleep, but it wasn't enough to wake him up. After a while, Mar while Maria returned, 
once again opening the door with a lively bang. When she had left the room, her face had been sleepy, but now that she was back, she looked irritated. After that, she climbed up on Battler's bed, which happened to be the closest, and started yelling and jumping on it like it was a trampoline. Well, I guess he won't sleep any longer. Wake up! What the fuck? Is it an enemy raid? Surround them! After making sure I was awake, Maria moved over to George Aniki's bed and started jumping on that too. In that manner, the three of us were all greeted with an extremely pleasant awakening. Not sure if I would call that extremely pleasant, but okay, I would at least call it extremely efficient. Thanks for waking us up, Maria Chan. You stopped us from sleeping in after that light night. If only you could have been a bit more gentle about it. Judge Nissan, you really are an adult. I respect that. It'll be seven o'clock soon. Well, it's not really a bad time to wake up. Ugh. Mama's not here. Oh, right, she's missing too, right? Aunt Rosa, she wasn't in her room. I wonder if she's already woken up and gone to the mansion. Not here. Mama. Maria kept groaning, ooh, and looking unhappy. She didn't exactly seem lonely because her mother wasn't around. It was more like she was irritated and thrown off balance because her mother wasn't where she'd expected. If we could just tell her where her mother was, that alone would probably calm her down, but unfortunately we had no way of knowing where Aunt Rosa was except that she wasn't here. Anyway, it's time for breakfast, so let's head over to the mansion. That's right. Maria, let's go to the mansion together, okay? I'm sure Aunt Rosa will be there too. Mm -hmm. Mama's in the mansion. Then I go there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, guess we should go to the mansion. Our parents have probably already gone there. Maria regained her usual composure so completely her earlier tantrum now seemed like a lie. We got dressed, left the room and headed for the mansion. Once more there was a knocking sound on the stirred study study oh, study door. But there was no answer. He seemed to be sleeping still, and I could not wake him. If she went back downstairs and said something like that, Eva would probably be amused and triumphant. And even putting Eva aside, it was problematic that Kinzo had stayed shut away during this entire once-a-year conference, not even coming down to greet anyone. Even the family head, no, especially the family head, couldn't fail to make an appearance. I wonder if I can convince him myself. Natsuhi readied herself and used the key that she'd borrowed from Genji to open the door. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Can't be good. Even though she was prepared for the sweet stench which seemed to eat into one's brain as it poured out of the small crack in the door, she couldn't help but grimace. Thinking that he might still be sleeping, not so he entered the room quietly. <laughs> entered the core room. That's kind of what I'm expecting right now. Oh no, there he is. The hell? Okay. When she did, Kinzo was already awake and looking down out of the window. So, so you are awake. Good morning. How did you get in? Kinzo spoke with his back still facing her. His voice was not harsh but calm and not so he was slightly reassured. However, though he was awake, he wouldn't have ignored all that knocking if he was in a good mood. Not so he wasn't able to relax. My sincere apologies, I asked Genji-san, and he allowed me to borrow the key to the study. Oh, Genji did. If my friend thought it was that important, then I have no choice but to listen. So, what business do you have with me? Well, breakfast will be ready soon, and I would greatly appreciate it if you would join us. I will eat here. Have it brought here like always. But father, this family conference happens only once a year. Please at least let them see your face. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit, look at that. Look at these eyes. Go back downstairs. Are you asking me to join in as they discuss how to chew up my inheritance after I die? How foolish. Let them speak of such matters as much as they please without me. And if that's what you call a family conference, it's hardly worth leaving my room for it. I am busy. Do not bother me. His last words carried the threat that any further questions would not be appreciated. 
Not so he realized that adding any further pleas would finally bring his wrath down upon her. She didn't look forward to facing Eva's sarcasm, but there was nothing more not so he could do. Is that so? Understood. I am sure everyone will be sorry to hear it, but I will tell them. Natsuhi decided to give up. Bowing silently, she tried to leave the room before Kinzo's spasmodic temper could flare up. As she did, Kinzo spoke to her. His voice was so calm and gentle, it felt like it came from an entirely different person. Natsuhi. It has been quite some time since you married into the Oshirumiya family. Yes, it has been many years since I was first permitted to bear the name Oshirumiya. Do you sometimes long for your previous family? No, marriage means abandoning your birth family. Well, that is a harsh way of putting that. Wouldn't say that's true. I am Oshirumiya Natsui. The Oshirumiya family is the only family I can come home to, the only one I am fond of. But I guess in their case it is like that. She truly wasn't exaggerating. Such was the resolve she felt whenever she applied the Ushirumiya family name to herself. And that's precisely why she was so saddened when her husband didn't treat her like an Ushirumiya, leaving her to race about in vain. If Klaus were a woman, <laughs> that's an odd thought to have. And you as husband. No, I won't say that. W what do you mean by that, father? Not so he was shocked. If Kinzo's words just now were what they seemed, it would have been more than enough to make up for all she'd suffered up to that point. Forget it. It's just the nonsense of an old man. Kinzo once again faced away from her. He told her to forget it, but not so he couldn't help feeling a warmth in her heart. Father, even though I, Natsuhi, am not connected to you by blood, I am still your daughter. I will most assuredly see to it that your honor and glory and everything you have left behind are protected. You do not have the right to wear the one-winged eagle. However, the one-winged eagle sh is surely engraved in your heart. That is irrefutable proof that you are my blood relative, one who will inherit the glory of the Oshiromiya family. Some will sneer that there is no eagle on your cloth, but such words are not worth lending an ear to. Only those who hold the eagle in their hearts are my true blood relatives. I now consider it an honor that you are welcomed into the Oshiromiya family. Well, that is pretty cool. Without saying anything more, Kinzo remained with his back to Natsuhi. However, Natsuhi couldn't help but feel something warm while up inside her, that she hadn't felt since long ago when she had been just a child. Natsuhi bowed silently to his back and left the room. Ah, good timing. How is father? You were taking so long I came to check. When Natsuhi left the study, she saw Eva climbing the stairs and their eyes met. Eva was smirking unpleasantly, thinking that Natsuhi would leave drudgingly after failing to convince Kinzo. However, the way Natsuhi was now, such a frivolous laugh would not disturb her. She was not permitted to wear the family crest on her clothing, but she was permitted to wear it in her heart. So she spoke calmly, clearly, and confidently, with the dignity of the one who would protect the Yoshiromiya family's glory. Father said he would not join in on the family conference. He says he has no interest in discussing such obscene matters. I figured you'd say something like that. If you fail to persuade Father, just say so. How pitiful. I'm beginning to see why Father lamented so. B what do you mean by that? Not so he did not answer. Just as Kinzu had done earlier, she showed Eva her back as she headed down the stairs. <laughs> Eva finally realized that she was being made fun of, that something had happened to quickly bolster Natsuhi's confidence. Even so, she apparently didn't have the courage to risk Kinzo's wrath. Unable to even knock on the door, she could only click her tongue, make a motion as though scratching at it, and follow after Natsuhi. So, were Nissan and the rest there? Did you ask father about them? I didn't get the chance to ask, but they were not inside the study. Father would never let them into his room to discuss such a lowly topic, so it is unlikely he knows where they went. Let us go downstairs and wait for the servants to return from their search. Breakfast may be late, but how would you like some tea, Eva-san? Th that would be fine. 
Eva couldn't hide her confusion at the complete difference in Natsuki's attitude. Yeah, she's just like... I think that now she's like, bitch, I don't give a fuck anymore. He accepted me, so... Screw you. <coughs> she was acting so boldly, and while Eva hated to admit it, she even had a sense of dignity about her. Unable to find forward with anything, Eva could only follow Natsuki back to the parlor. When the two of them returned to the parlor, <coughs> Hideyoshi had been joined by the four children and Nanjo. Oh, the doctor. Whoever is the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. Okay. Genji, who had been talking with Hideyoshi, reported the current situation when he noticed that Natsui had returned. You still have not found my husband and the rest? Yes, my apologies. Also, Kumasawa has started preparing breakfast. She said that she will need just a little longer. The clock read a little past eight. Eight should have been the time to start breakfast. Normally, going over that time limit would be a disgrace to the host. Carlo is now searching outside. Also, no one has seen Shannon either. Oh, no. Even Shannon is missing? Surely, just how many people did my husband bring with him on his little walk? <coughs> yeah, about that walk. I'm pretty sure that's not what really happened. Just how many people had gone missing by now? Now that the number was this large, it was starting to feel truly unpleasant, as though the people here were the only ones being left out of something interesting. You should... Why isn't she thinking of the bloody scratching hand thing on her doorknob again? I would be starting to worry at this point. At least that seemed to reflect the feelings of the children, and, and Maria in particular. She was indignant, her stomach grumbling, almost as though her mother and the others had left her alone to go off and eat something delicious without her. The other children were flipping through the channels on the television, trying to find a program that might interest Maria and cheer her up again. Nanjo was sitting on the sofa, gazing blissfully at the children while reading a book. What? How can he gaze at the children and read a book at the same time? Is he, like, kind of has to eyes like a chameleon can like, <laughs> like one eye looks at the book and the other starts turning around and looks at the children There's, I shouldn't even imagine that it must have been a book about chess the sound of footsteps came rushing towards them with a pitter patter there was only one set so they realized before seeing who it belonged to that it was probably Kanon not Klaus and the rest madam excuse me judging by your appearance you still haven't been able to find them my apologies. I still haven't. Only found an arm and a leg over there. <laughs> that would be enough. You've worked hard. She didn't know where they were, but they had to be somewhere on this island. They hadn't had a thing to eat since the previous night, so their stomachs must be growing, growling about now. They'd probably come plodding back of their own accord before long. By now, not so he was thoroughly exasperated and started to feel that there was no reason for them to go out of their way and search. I will go to the kitchen... Oh, that's wahrscheinlich canon. I will go to the kitchen to prepare some tea for all of the guests. Thanks to both of you for all of your hard work. So, nee, ist doch nicht so hier. <coughs> You're reading a book and watching my stream, scream at the same stream at the same time. Yeah, I mean, I can imagine what what they meant by that. Like, sometimes he looks at the book, sometimes he looks up. I just want to joke a bit about it because the way it was phrased kind of sounded gave me this weird mental image of him looking one eye with one one way with one eye and one way with the other who knows maybe nanju is a reptile anyway i think this is, is it not so he saying this i will go to the kitchen to prepare some tea for all of the guests thanks to both of you for all your hard work so early in the morning i must be not so he not so he left the parlor acting as though the release and tension had caused a new surgeon her headache kanon tried to call to her back but not so he left swiftly what is it? Was there something else? Yes. I was unable to find her husband or anyone else, but... Well... Kanon sounded evasive. It looked as though he didn't know where they were, but had spotted something that might be connected to their disappearance. Let me guess, blood? Eva and Hideyoshi noticed this exchange of words and came over. They'd probably picked up on something strange in Kanon's behavior. What's going on, Kanon? Did you find Klaus, Nissan, and everyone else? Actually... The Rose Garden storehouse looked strange. What do you mean, it looked strange? 
It was, um... How should I explain it? Conan hesitated once more. His tone wasn't at all what you'd expect from his usually fearless, this usually fearless boy. Seeing this, Ifa and Hideyoshi looked at each other dubiously. What do you mean? Are you saying Nissan and the others were inside the storehouse? No, I'm going to inspect the inside now. I just now came back to get the key, but, um... I don't really get it, but it sounds like we've just got to look around inside it. Where's the key to that storehouse? It is in the servant room. Let us check inside the storehouse at once. <coughs> Kanon dashed off to the servant room and returned with the key. Genji left the parlor, saying that he would go check, but then Eva and Hideyoshi followed after him. What was this something strange about the storehouse that had caused the usually fearless Kanon to hesitate? It was still pouring outside, but perhaps their curiosity over the something that Kanon couldn't talk about worn out. While the children made a big fuss watching television, Kanon and the rest dashed over to the entrance. <laughs>